Welcome everyone. This is Merge Implementers call number three. Let me drop the agenda to the chat. Um, this is going to be a short one. No major spec discussions is planned for today. Uh, we'll start with the Ryanism updates uh, from client updates, then go to the um, update on the um, first DevNet that we are about to launch tomorrow, which is called Stickler. Um And yeah, then we have some uh, research updates, not much there. Then go to spec discussions, probably some questions um, are there, and yep, then we're done. Okay, so let's start from Ryanism um, client updates. Um, I'll start from Teku side. So Teku is like ready for um, the first DevNet launch. It's been tested with uh, Bazoo, Nethermind, and Catalyst. And uh, yeah, so that's that's it. Yeah. We're excited to see it in the in, in the first DevNet and see how the things are going. And, um, in, I didn't try like interrupt it with other clients, but just tried to run it on a couple of machines. Um, yep, went well. So let us see. Um, um, also, uh, um, not uh, but, uh, the update not about the merge, uh, but Anton started to work on sharding implementation in Taco, implemented sharding spec, and did some um, sanity tests. So works in general and he keeps keeps doing progress on that okay so that's from teku um who wants to be next i can i can take lighthouse um yep. not a whole lot to report on our end we got uh interrupt going with nethermind now so we're now working with geth and nethermind uh yeah we're ready for the, the devnet i believe um, we're still not calling the finalized endpoint, but we can, can probably throw that in pretty quickly. Um, yeah, I think that's that's it for us. Yep, great. Um, Prismatic. Yep. Hey there. Um, so I think we're pretty much ready. We spent the last few days um, debugging Hashu root for the transactions field, and thanks to Proto, he helped a ton there. So we were able to get um, interrupt working locally between um, Prism and Catalyst. So today we'll try Nevermind and all the other ep client. clients. But yeah, I think we're pretty much ready for the test net. That's it. Yeah, so cool. Um, Nimbus? Uh, yeah, um, I think we're, we're ready. Um, so we're, we've been testing with uh, Geth, uh, with Geth Catalyst, and, and so far it's been uh, the interop's been uh, solid, um, uh, so yeah, looking forward to see see if this works, how this works tomorrow. Great. Okay. So um, yeah, I guess we can go to ETH1 clients. Um, who wants to be first? I can go first. So nothing major. Uh, we will be releasing a hot fix for what Lighthouse um, submitted to us a small issue in the contracts in the response, but nothing major. Uh, we'll be releasing it today, so we will have a newest release a newest Docker today. Um, uh, what what is this issue about? Like uh, the issue is that. Uh, the response wasn't serialized correctly, and I don't know. I think it's something in Docker because, in general, it should work. Um, I'm really confused why it happened because it worked fine for me. Um, it's uh... sorry, just to simplify it. Uh, the response is instead of success, instead of, it was saying value, and Lighthouse said that it is generally okay. So uh, I'm interrupting because maybe a question to: Can we not release it and simplify? It? so they can continue can lighthouse say if they will work fine with this uh, response yeah so we um we don't let an error on that endpoint stop us from progressing so we um it, it, it so lighthouse just kind of logs an error uh that 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 we, we didn't find the field we expected in the response um 
and the success that the call works well in um, Nethermind. So it doesn't really stop anything from working. It just creates an error log. So let's not really easy to not confuse any people who are using already some Docker. Wukash, what do you think? I don't you think, think that release will hurt anything. So we will be more uh, more stable. And if you just grab a new Docker image, it should be fine for you. So um, I would still release it. OK, cool. Anything else here? OK, then um, who wants to speak from Go Ethereum, from Catalyst? Is anybody from Go Ethereum here? I don't think so. Uh, OK, OK. So I, I can speak. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I can give an update on that. It just works. I tried it. Great. So, OK. Um, yeah, Bazu. Uh, yeah, we just um, got a working Bezu Teku uh, local net yesterday and uh, did some debugging and um, got it into a good enough state that we think that it's it's good enough to uh, join the, the Friday test net. Um, it's still pretty early because we just recently got it, uh, you know, stable. And um, right now it's just a, a Rayanism branch uh, and PR uh, and a, a private Docker repo. But uh, we're looking forward to participating. Great. Um, anybody else? Else? Uh, Turbo Gath, Ethereum. Quick question before tomorrow. So uh, it seems like um, a number of ETH2 clients have tried different ETH1 clients underneath the hood. And then have we had a number of ETH1 clients tried like a number of ETH2 clients under the hood? If, I guess, have, have we run any short lived transient test nets with multiple uh, like different consensus engines driving? Or is tomorrow the first time we're attempting that? So I've successfully paired Lighthouse and uh, Teku. That works. Then there were okay. some initial issues with Lighthouse and Nethermind, but those have been resolved, I believe. So I'm confident it will work. OK. So yeah. like Lighthouse and Teku agreed on, on yeah, the consensus changes are very minimal, obviously, but uh, I'm just curious if they can stand up a network together. Yeah, I've been also like using Deco with Nethermind and Catalyst um, in like one local. Local. It was not actually local. It was a couple of machines. Yeah, but we want this now. It worked well. I mean, if we are. Yep. So one thing I like to share here is that at first we were just looking at launching like the very minimal set of clients to just get something stable out that we knew now like should work that we had tested for a longer time. And in the past few days, there have been like an immense amount of new clients and instructions on how to build all of these things. And although I think, and I'm still confident that we can run like this multi-client testnet, it's a lot. It's like clients are being added faster than we can rewrite deployment code for them. So. Yeah. This is actually great, I think. Yeah, and very exciting to see uh, what we'll have tomorrow. So, okay, so we have like four ETH2 clients and three ETH1 clients ready for the first DevNet, which is very impressive. Mm -hmm. Brother, do you want to give like more details on tomorrow's launch? Sure. Um, so we have a configuration up. Yesterday, we had uh, a, an initial configuration, but we changed it a little bit. So we changed the validator set and we changed the fork version in, on the Ethereum 2 side. Um, other than that, it's the basic familiar configuration you know from previous testnets. It's a mainnet configuration this time, though. It's not the minimal configuration 
you may be using locally. And um, right, and in chat you can find the link to this uh, testnet configuration. We will uh, set up boot nodes right after the call, and then deploy some nodes of our own. And then I think today we'll just focus on connecting all of these nodes, getting everything running, and then. Tomorrow at uh, noon UTC, we will start the chain. Great. Um, so I would like suggest to jump on the Discord, uh, one of the on the Ryanism Discord voice channel after this call to do some coordination on on this first DevNet uh, to, to understand who runs uh, what. And it would be great if we have like uh, full coverage of different mixes of each one and two clients in order not to miss any, um, any interop possibility. I believe with um, four different Ethereum 2 clients and three different Ethereum 1 clients, we have to test at least 12 combinations. Um, I think, or at least we will try to run all 12 of them. But then I also need other teams to run as many combinations as they can. And if you don't have validator keys already, please reach out and then you can get your monomic to participate with validators. Okay, any questions to the TechLaw DevNet? What's the precise time it's starting again? 12 UTC. 12 um, yeah. Yeah, UTC. Yep. Yep. Gotcha. And maybe Proto will throw up a, a, a Zoom link 30 minutes before to congregate. We will be live a lot during like the run up to the testnet in Discord and chat in the Rayonism calls channel and we can do Zoom right before. Okay. Yeah, I'll just look to Ryanism Discord channel for for coordination purposes. I think a lot of conversations will happen there. Like today and tomorrow. Um Okay, I see Peter just joined. Peter, do you want to give any updates on the cut list? Um, mainly in the context of this uh, uh, short-lived merged DevNet that will start tomorrow. Uh, the update prior to you joining was Catalyst seems to work because multiple people have interrupted with it. Right, and I have like a follow-up question about like transaction propagation enabling for a catalyst mode. Um, do we have any like estimation on when it could happen? Peter, can you hear us? Okay, probably not. Okay, I'll ask later. Um, okay, let's just go to research updates. Um, there is like the first update I, um, I've made to the folk choice rule section of the design document, um, of the execution layer design document. Um, this, this update is just to remove um, the recommendation on using the new block as the signal for the fork choice because even if the new block uh, that, it, that is coming from consensus side is valid it does not mean I, I mean this even as if execution payload is like valid one it does not mean that the whole beacon block is valid and depending on the implementation of consensus um, side of consensus layer um, of consensus client, uh, it will be like uh, it, it, it could be the case uh, when there 
like the new block has been sent to the execution layer and it's been valid. Um, but yeah, but uh, like state root mismatch hap happened on the consensus side later. And yep. and uh, yeah, in, the, in that regard, uh, in this case, the new head won't be issued for this particular block. So that's why it's been removed. And the only um, trigger for the fork choice is the new head message. I don't think like, um, it has a big impact on implementations currently, but anyway. Wait, sorry. So the this is the trigger for changing the fork choice on the execution client side from being proof of work to being transition mode? Um, no, it's not about transition, but it's just oh, no, about, it's a, you know, there was like, yeah, there was a recommendation. Oh, it's, it's, oh, it's post-transition. Or... Right, right, right. It was a recommendation, okay. so you can, it was like, you can use like new block if it's valid mm -hmm. and if it's like an, a child of mm -hmm. the head of the chain, you can switch the head of the chain to this new block, uh, which right. might not, which depending on the implementation might not uh, work correctly. Well, why is this? Is this because we, I, we want the execution clients to not trust the linkage of this client for this, or yeah. it's because here. you you might like run things and so you might say you ran uh, execution and, and consensus validation in parallel, mm -hmm. then you mm -hmm. might actually find that the can the some of the beacon block contents were invalid and mm -hmm. thus even though the execution oh, payload was valid, it's not valid, or oh, you know okay. any type of like ordering issues on that. Uh, right, right. I see. Okay, so like if the Client, it basically, if the client implementation sent the uh, execution block to the execution client before it did at least one of the other checks, and if those remaining checks were ended up like not passing, then it would be a problem. Yeah, like for example, if you don't right. do this state root until the end, then you wouldn't actually know, and so you can't take the shortcut of like mm -hmm. it's a leaf block of the head. Right, right, makes sense, but. Whereas a new head message is something that would come to an execution client after the consensus client right. did the full validation cycle. Okay. Yep. So that's it. Yep, just pay attention to it. If you have started to implement this uh, external fork choice stuff. Okay, the next update is the withdrawal design doc. Dimitri has like um, gained a. Uh, like this, this doc from um, his uh, proof of concept implementation for the withdrawal mechanism, um, and this this is what we will probably take into a kind of spec for Ryanism in the next couple of weeks, because uh, there was an idea to deploy withdrawals, uh, to deploy the withdrawal test net. Um, so, uh, Dimitri, do you want to speak about it? Uh, yeah, a few words. Uh, I'm working on withdrawals and I've created a specification. It's not actually a specification, more like a design document, uh, but a spec could be made from it. Uh, the link is in the chat and in the agenda and any feedback appreciated directly to me or by comments in FigureMD. It doesn't support partial withdrawals. Uh, it only works with validator exit uh which leading to full withdrawal but from what i made i see special withdrawal somewhere around and i am going to extend spec with them in a few days i was skeptical about partial withdrawals at the beginning but now i see we could make them without much pain so i still think we could we should resist uh it so we will not uh, we will not see uh, withdrawal messages uh one per day per every validator we should restrict it in such manner so it will be uh, less frequent and that's all for me any questions to dimitri about this doc i was able to review it in general i think it looks good i left a number of comments on there and we don't have to go through them now but uh i just want to make sure you saw them um and yeah i think I think the base of that can probably be extended uh, with partial withdrawals if as long as the withdrawals are unique and that they have like a unique identifier or something so that the mapping isn't based on validator index. And that also allows for reusing validator indices later, which is good. Yeah. 
but uh, otherwise, it generally looks good. So I encourage everybody who's interested in withdrawals and or just want to take a look, just take a look like um, like in the next week. So put your questions on Discord, like in comments to this talk. Yeah, it definitely feels like a simple and clean method, so I'm happy with that. Yep. Any other research updates? Okay, cool. Yeah, that's because a lot of work uh, happening on the right. Okay, sorry. Danny. Uh, I was just going to mention that um, we are going to attempt to turn on the like core suite of tests for the merge spec that's in the repo um for the next pre-release but as i say that i'm also realizing that the ryan as a merge spec is probably potentially diverged a little bit on the beacon chain side from what's in the spec repo so that might not actually be very useful but um we can talk about that i guess in a few days um if that is useful i think we can cut some test sectors next week it's primarily just like whether you can support the types and things uh, because most of the consensus changes are extremely minimal. Yeah, wh 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 what do you mean by diversion? What has diverged? Oh, um, I, and I'm not certain if this is the case, but the has the Ryanism spec from the, um, is that just pointing to dev currently, or is that pointing to a particular commit on the Beacon Chain side? It's pointing to dev. So. Okay. Gotcha. Then cutting the test vectors would be useful. I wasn't sure if it had pointed to like a commit that was from maybe a week ago or two weeks ago. Okay, I see. Okay, thanks. Um, yep. I think we're done with research updates. Let's go to spec discussion. Um, so any, any questions? I know that there is a work happening um, on the on the state and probably block sync implementation. Um, does anybody have any questions with regard to this particular work or any other uh, work that's happening on the execution layer from the spec perspective and from the researcher's perspective? Okay, so I guess, yeah, everybody is busy with the uh, Ryanism, which makes a lot of sense. So I think, I think we can get back to this, um, to this like in, in a couple of weeks. Um, any questions for the Beacon Chain side, for the Beacon Chain spec? So um, I have a question regarding the merge spec. I look at the merge spec and the uh, I think the merge should ideally be built, the merge spec should ideally be built on top of, sorry, the sharding spec should be built on, on top of the merge spec because without the execution payload header, I'm not sure how useful that is, right? Well, right. theoretically, the spec part, like the changes to the spec that need to be done are pretty independent, right? So, like, you can. Like you can work on the two in parallel, though. Obviously, you know there's not much value in actually implementing sharding before the merge goes through, except for just like testing value, basically. Yeah, and okay. the current state of the spec is phase zero is stable. Everyone has implementations of it, and so it's easier to have the spec currently both of those specs merge and sharding be based off of phase zero, so that if changes to the merge happen, if we don't have to go in and change the sharding stack and vice versa. And so that we can kind of independently iterate, but once um, they stabilize and once there's like a very concrete order, like merge will go to mainnet first, which I think we all generally agree on, uh, we would see like 
sharding be rebased on kind of the merge spec. And similarly, once Altair implementations do exist. Correction here, um, sharding is already based on the merge spec in the F2 specs repo. Okay. Okay, because I don't see the execution payload header in the vision state, but maybe I'm just missing. I think it just extends the state. Okay, got it. Anything else? Any other questions? Cool. Okay, open discussions. Does anyone want to discuss anything? Did we want to chat about the how are we going to set up RANism nodes in here or do? We definitely want to do that in the Discord after. I, w I would suggest to do it in Discord after, like in a less formal manner. Just like it, if it would be like an offline event, you know. Sure. Um, so I would just like to say thanks, implementers, teams, um, for their hard work uh, that they've just done to to be at this line, um, at this line, I mean, in, in terms of uh, Ryanism progress, thanks a lot to Proto for doing a lot of coordination and other other stuff. So I'm very excited about tomorrow's launch. So let's go to, I think we're gonna just wrap up and go to Discord or do, do we want to like, uh, take a 30 minutes break or it's kind of my preference is oh. not a 30 minute break because it's 11 30 <laughs> here <laughs> i was gonna say that for paul as well <laughs> yeah okay 6 30 a.m here it'd be nice to get some coffee yeah let's i was just suggest to yeah wrap up here and go to discord and whoever joins at uh, whatever time so it doesn't make too much Okay, thanks everyone for coming. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Great work, everyone. Thank you all. Bye bye. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.